Design a service like YouTube where users can upload and view videos. Hey everyone, welcome back to another system design mock interview with Exponent. My name's Kevin and on today's show we have Josefa. We're going to be doing a technical system design interview and before we do that, Josefa, do you mind just telling the audience a little bit about who you are? Sure. Uh, hey everyone, uh, this is Josefa. I am an engineering manager at Wealthfront. Uh, prior to that, I was at PayPal uh, for about eight and a half years. Great, thanks Josefa. We're going to be doing a system design interview like we mentioned, and this is what I'd like to ask. Design a service like YouTube where users can upload and view videos. All right, so uh, let's get started. YouTube like system. So I have a few questions uh, on it. So basically with the YouTube like system, there are uh, two aspects. One is your content creators and one is uh, other people who are consuming consuming the, the content, right? So when we create a system like this, we need to kind of tailor to uh, both sides. And in terms of uh, creating of content, um, I'm assuming that users can kind of upload in any format uh, from any, any device, like be it a cell phone or a sophisticated camera. And then we kind of do all, all the system take, takes care of the post uh, processing. Yeah, that's a good assumption. All right. All right, on, on the consumption side, I think that um, also we have a similar uh, a use case where uh, given a video, uh, a user should be able to view it on any any device, uh, be it an iPhone or an Android uh, device, a television, uh, a laptop as well. So the viewing, viewing experience uh, should be device ag agnostic as well. Uh, another thing we, we need to kind of uh, make sure or, or, or do we need to kind of look at interaction on the videos um, like, you know, commenting uh, likes, dislikes, up arrow, down arrow uh, in, as a part of this, this system? Yeah, good question. Maybe we can leave that for V2 if we have time, but let's just focus on uploading and viewing for now. All right. So, all right. These are the two, two main, uh, you know, as, as we would say, um, uh, functional requirements for the system. I think in, in terms of the uh, non-functional requirements, um, I would say that for a system like this, uh, high availability uh, is, is very uh, important. Uh, you, you want the system to be available. And in terms of consistency, I think we, we can target eventual consistency. Um, and, 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 and the reason is uh, that but once a video is uploaded, it need not be available immediately or in, in real time uh, to all the users. There can be a lag from the time the video is uploaded to the time the video is available. Once the video is available to, to the users, you want it to be highly available and you, you want it to be uh, as low uh, latency uh, as, as possible. Uh, all right. So given this, uh, we can kind of get into uh, a high level system. So basically, uh, as I said, right, you, you have two streams of uh, uh, data flow, right? So you have the write uh, in part, which is the content creation and the read part, which is the content uh, uh, consumption. Uh, like any uh, video streaming application, the ratio of reads to writes uh, uh, will vary very heavily uh, in, in favor of uh, reads. Right, so there'll be more pe people viewing the videos than videos getting uh, uploaded into the system. So we, we need to, our system needs to account for that. So let me first uh, kind of at a high level, figure out what our uh, content creation system uh, would look like. And then next part, we, we would look at, at how the consumption um, would be. So we, let's say we start off with the client over here. Um, so basically the client, um, and this is your, you have your video upload service, right? Uh, so your, and your, your client is, is connected to your video upload, upload service 
um, you, you could have some kind of a um, upload a video API kind of thing. Uh, basically, we, we would use some kind of an open open socket socket connection like uh, uh, like uh, web 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 TC or something, uh, uh, so that the a stream of video can be uh, passed to, from the server to the client. It's it's uh, the the size of the video can vary uh, quite a bit, so it's not going to be feasible to use uh, something like a, a like a REST end, endpoint over here or a REST protocol to kind of transmit the actual video. We could use that uh, REST endpoint to transmit the metadata uh, around the video, uh, but the actual video, we, we would use some kind of an open open socket uh, connection to, to do that. And we'll get into, into those uh, details a little later, later on. So you, you mentioned a video uploading service here, uh, and what are some of the uh, calls that this API would have? Yeah, so basically, I think that uh, fundamentally at, at a high level, th this API would, would, would handle two, two things, right? Wh one is your uh, upload video call. This uh, uh, would take in the metadata ar around the video. Uh, like, um, let me add that here. So it, it, it could be your user ID, your you know title of the video, description, um, meta tags, um, timestamp, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and then you have the actual, uh, video, video itself where, uh, so you could say, this is your metadata, uh, over here. And then, and then the next one would be where you are actually uploading the, the video it, itself. So you want to break this out into two parts, one, which is just for, um, strings and the other is the stream of video that that you are sending to your video video service got it once um, um the video service has it we one of the things we've we've mentioned here is that we want the video to be available in multiple devices so the idea here is that the user is uploading video in in one format and we need to do some post-processing uh, encoding uh, or transcoding on the video so that it's kind of uh, available in multiple formats, right? So we, we can have some kind of a queuing queuing system over here, uh, where uh, basically this takes in this raw raw video uh, from your um, uh, video recording uh, service and uh, processes it into different formats, different resolutions that. Uh, that we can uh, serve to the to the users. Uh, there are two things on the storage side that we need to kind of account for over here. So let me just add. So this so one will be our uh, a, our database for the metadata, right? So this could be a, a, a relational a relational database um, that has like user information, video video metadata information. In the future, if we uh, augment the system to have something like likes, comments ar around that. So any interaction that we do uh, with the video, the another database we would or another storage that we would uh, we would have oops, is some kind of a blob storage like S3 to store the actual videos, right? So any, anything coming from transcoding is going here. Uh, Anything coming from all metadata coming from the video service is kind of going going here directly. And so so at, at scale, are you still going to be, be storing them like this, or would you partition them in any way? So at scale, we would partitioning partition the uh, the both the databases, uh, and and we would do another thing over here at scale is uh, from a content viewing viewing side, we would move this data into into a CDN. We would uh, uh, not let users directly kind of come come to this um, blob blob storage. So, um, um, as as a, as as a users would scale, you could you could see this database getting getting sharded in terms of um, the video IDs. So you you could say a, a hash of uh, the video IDs from certain ranges would would line every every shard, and then correspondingly the same thing uh, could happen. To, to the blob storage as, as, as well. 
Cool, got it. So yeah, so this is basically your upload client. And besides uh, sharding by the IDs, like what are some other ideas you you would have for uh, sharding? Yeah, for so you could you could shard videos by um, by geography. You could shard them by genre. Uh, you know what type of video it is. Um, you could shard them by uh, creator um, as well. So. Um, th these are some of the um, different ways you, you could you could shard them. And which one would you pick? Mm, I think given the the global nature of, of something like like you, you, YouTube, um, it would make sense to um, shard videos by uh, in my view by by users, by creators uh, because generally, uh, people tend to follow certain uh, creators or certain channels uh, within um, within their profile, and that kind of is how a recommendation is is created for them. So um, that would make kind of querying querying easier uh, for them. So I I would kind of shard it uh, on the users who are creating creating those videos. Got it. Yep. Um, yeah. So now this would be your user. Basically, the use we now this is somebody who's viewing the video. We would have a streaming service, uh, and as I, as I've mentioned, the, your the video streaming is uh, going to be way more uh, in terms of the traffic that it gets. It's way more uh, as compared to um, your uh, video upload. So this is both of them are. Are going to be uh, horizontally scaled, uh, but the video streaming service is going to be scaled much more um, proportionally than than your upload upload service. Uh, okay. So basically, this would be like a stream um, video uh, URL, and and what uh, you could you could say the input uh, input uh, would be be the URL uh, of the video that you. That you uh, want to want to stream. Um, we to, yeah. Uh, one thing we could we could do is um, build out some kind of a. I would say I would want to build out a CDN over here first. Uh, once a request comes to your uh, video service, it would first need to kind of check. Um, with the database that whether that video exists, um, whether the user has the required permissions to view the, view the video uh, and, and, uh, and whatnot. Um, once that is validated, the video streaming service would then kind of uh, uh, give the response from the CDN uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the user. Now, how uh, the video is getting to the CDN? It's getting from the from your blob storage to the to the CDN, right? So there are a couple ways to kind of get this video from the blob storage to this to the CDN. So one is we we actively uh, as a system as the videos are getting uh, uh, processed and added into into blob storage, we actively add them into into CDN. Uh, another way we do that is we we first wait for a user to kind of request a video we check it in in cdn if it's not there then we fetch it from the blob storage and and put it onto onto the cdn so basically the first few users who would uh, want to request the videos would have a slightly um, slower experience than subsequent users once the the, the cdn has the uh, particular uh, video so the uh, the the advantage uh, over here of doing uh, the second approach is that you you would only put the most popular videos in CDN rather than putting uh, everything because from a cost standpoint CDNs are going to be much more uh, expensive or um, than than a blob storage like like S3 and you would eventually want to kind of use some kind of an invalidation strategy on the CDN like an LRU uh, system where the older videos are eventually uh, removed uh, uh, invalidated from from the CD. CDN. Uh, one thing I would want to also mention on on the database side, I could 
see that there are a um, couple main main entities over here so you, you have the user and um, you know you could have your id you you have your email uh, you have your name the um, the other uh, imp very important entity over here is the video video itself so again you will have the id for the video which will which will be a string you can have the tit title description you, you can have tags which are comma separated um timestamp um you know location and much more uh, yeah so you, you could have uh, urls here so so basically the, these urls are uh, uh, the urls of what how where the videos are stored in in your blob blob storage so you can uh, given enough enough videos you can think or enough variations of your videos you can think of splitting it out into into a table of its of its own where an, a unique video id maps to a unique uh, location in in url the other thing also you could you could uh, you could do over here when the the user is streaming is uh, having a, an adaptive bitrate um, kind of a system so where the as as bytes are going from the cdn to the user the user is sending feedback whether it's able to kind of um, consume those bytes at a at a respectable pace or getting the bytes are bytes are getting transferred at a respectable pace so based on the on the data or or of how the bandwidth is for the user we can up or down the resolution of, of what we are sending to the user so we can go down from like say for example a 1080p to to a 360p um, if needed so we kind of keep monitoring it every few seconds to see whether we need to uh, up or down um, the the bitrate yep that makes sense so I see that you have a video streaming service here and you've mentioned, which is true, that you, you've mentioned that we're going to have more people reading than writing. What would happen if suddenly uh, we have a big event like the Super Bowl and many people are coming and the video streaming service fails? So I think um, what you would want to do, um, so are we talking about a live event here or are we talking about some pre-uploaded video for a Super Bowl? So let's say that we know that next week there's going to be a big event and many people are going to come and watch videos. What, what would you do? So I think if, if that, is, um, that is the case, we, we definitely obviously are, are scaling this system um, horizontally. Uh, the, the other thing uh, you, 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 you would want to do is, um, is also have an extra layer of ca cash in the middle. So basically, uh, if you know that this is this video or, or, you know, for example, as you said, right, some influencer post a video and you have a rush of traffic uh, towards, towards that video, you don't want um, the video streaming service to get, get bombarded and overloaded by them. So what you could, you could essentially, essentially do is uh, uh, cache all of this information that it is getting from the DB over here in some kind of an in-memory cache and then kind of uh, respond back to the users much much more quickly so you could kind of build uh, a cache over here so the video streaming service first talks to the cache and then uh, it kind of the cache can talk to the to the database and how would the cache be updated so the so basically caches uh, can be updated uh, so th this information is um, the the metadata of the videos itself so you could uh, think of it that way where when the first request comes in um, the information is not in the cache uh, you update the cache and then for every subsequent request you uh, uh, you use the cache or you uh, proactively push this information into the cache so every time uh, one way to think about it is every time the blob storage processing is complete uh, the blob storage could kind of give that information to to the db and the db can also collectively write um, into into the cache so the, the, whatever information is in the cache is mainly going to be static by nature 
uh, it's not uh, changing from an upload upload you uh, standpoint cool got it um, awesome this is a, a good solution is, was there anything else you want to add um, I think one one thing you can you can look at over here is analytics information as well uh, if you wanted to kind of see how 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 many um, what users are viewing, uh, how many seconds and, and all of that. So you could kind of have uh, a stream or a or an analytics system here. Uh, and kind of, which is kind of constantly reading re reading it on, in the background from here. And, and then you kind of have, have a large uh, data warehouse that, that you're pushing pushing these events onto for further processing and visualization down, down the line. Great. Yep, that's a very important feature too. Um, but I think for the functionality requirements that we have here, uh, this is a good solution. So I'll take off my interviewer hat now. Um, thanks again for the great solution, Josefa. I have some feedback here that I'll share with you. And I'd also love if you can share some um, self-feedback for the audience as well. I really like the clarifying questions that you asked in the beginning. I think they were very thorough. And you did a good job checking in with me and, and leaving some space and not just rambling. So I think your communication was really good. Um, bless you. Um, but you, you, you left some good uh, time for me to check in with you and give you some uh, follow-up questions as well on my end. You also pointed out a very good uh, trend which would happen, which is that we're going to have more reads than writes. And um, you were able to design around this uh, this expectation. And you, you also mentioned that um, there's, th you, you also mentioned some good edge cases to consider. For example, not everyone would have permission to watch every video. You know, the majority of videos might be public, but there might be some private videos or unlisted videos too. So I think it's also good to show that you were considering these different edge cases. Um, so all in all, great. Uh, system design, thanks for your, your time and coming to share your knowledge with the audience. And I'd love for you to share some self-feedback too, if you have any. Um, sure. I think maybe uh, one of the things I was um, thinking about is adding some kind of more fault tolerance over here um, into, the, into the system. Uh, how we would kind of, uh, you know, outside of sharding, do we look at a master slave, slave kind of a con configuration for our... Uh, database and uh, uh, even even for our videos, given that this is a very data heavy uh, system, how do we kind of optimize for for space over here? Uh, if you're looking uh, from purely a cost standpoint, right? That if if you are um, eventually this would kind of add, the numbers would add up given given enough scale. Got it. Yep. Great. Great consideration. Thank you for your time, um, Josefa, and for the audience, good luck with your upcoming system design interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.